What's going on y'all? Susie Ladio with Nandis here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I created a Marvel search engine using the Marvel Comics API that they have available. And I'm just going to get to it. So here is the end product. It's actually just got a search bar, a title, search button. So initially you just start off by searching for a name, like a character name. So I'm just going to type in Hulk and then you see you have this loading bar right here as it, it reaches the API and then in this part portion comes out and then now it's loading for the comics so now the comics is done and then below this information we have a, a list of comics I think it's the uh, let me see 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 so it's 20 different comics the first 20 and you can whenever you go through the API you can like change it to to list out from top to bottom or bottom to top so anyway there's a list of comics and from here you can click on any one of these images and it'll send you to the information about that particular comic also right here here's this all this information is coming from the API you got the title the description of the, that particular comic the characters the creators that are involved and then as per the developer API documentation you have to put somewhere where the data came from and that comes from the API as well so I'm gonna click on one of these comics and then here it sends you to another page that has that comics information again and you can, you can go back to the search home this way and then right here you have a list of other characters that are involved in this particular comic and then you have creators so if I click on any one of these com in characters, like say Submariner, if I click click on it, it sends me back to the search engine, and you see that it in uh, the value for this search bar is actually right here again, Submariner, and then it it's searching the API for the comics and the information for him. So here's the definition. It tells you all the comics, series, stories, and events that he's involved in, in the comics uh, for that a developer for the API. There's a, obviously an image. If they don't have an image, it, it won't ha it won't have an image. It'll have something that looks like this. For instance, this comic it doesn't have an image, so it just has that. So just back to what it was. Now I want to show you what the creators page looks like. So I'm going to click on one of these. Back to here now. All the here's a list of creators for this particular comic. You can click on one of them, like say this person here, and then it sends you to a creator page where it's loading their information and all, a list of other comics that they've uh, helped create. So this guy sometimes they have an image of the person. If they don't have an image of the person, they have an image of a, a comic they that they represent or whatever. So and this takes you to a list of comics right here also. So and this if you click on any of these it sends you back to the information for the comic the characters and so on and so forth right so let me just click on this and then I want to go back to the home page it'll send me back to the home page okay so at th so right now just to go ahead and get started I'm going to open up my ter terminal right here I have a terminal window and I'm just gonna create a file on my desktop I'm gonna CD into the desktop first once I'm in the desktop I'm going to create a directory called Marvel so the way I do that is I hit make dir and then Marvel and once that's created I'm going to move into that directory by hitting CD current directory and then Marvel okay now that I'm in that directory um, usually once I have this created I, I just I go over to to my github and then just create a new repository uh, and that's usually under repositories and then right here there's a button you just click new and I just name it here just type it Marvel and just I'll just put a description uh, create created Marvel search engine using Marvel API once I have the description it's public and then I initialize it with the readme and I uh, create a license MIT and then I don't do a, di a git ignore yet I'll do that here in a minute so I create the repository okay so here's my my newly created repository and then I click on right here which says clone or download and I'll copy this uh, link right here go back to my my terminal 
and from here I'll just type uh, what I'll do is to I clone I'll clone this repository into this directory so I'll say git clone and then hit the pair um, and then paste that URL the the clone URL that I downloaded back here and then hit the dot because what the and then what the dot means is it's gonna uh, clone this repository into this directory so and then hit enter clone it cloned it in there now to ch check it I'm just gonna hit um, LS and it, it'll list everything that's in there and that and that's exactly it so you see right I have the license and then the readme okay so next thing I'll do is from here I'll open up my text editor and I'm using video, Visual Studio Code and I just to open that up in this directory I'll just type in code and then hit a period and then it opens up Visual Studio Code for me so right now what I'm going to do is add a git ignore file so what a git ignore does is it helps me to ignore any files that I do not want to be shown publicly on to the github repository here and one thing that I use to help me with that is I use a website called gitignore.io and here you just type in the files that you use that you want to ignore so I'll type in Mac OS OS X uh, next thing I like to ignore is node visual studio code and so what I'll do is I create it and then I'll just copy all this go back to my text editor into the git ignore and just paste that in there basically what this does is it tells git to ignore like say for instance like on my Mac OS X I want git to ignore these these files the DS store the icon all this stuff then for Visual Studio Code say like say you don't want the tasks or the settings.json another thing like a package.json or, or the node modules that's another reason why I use node see right here like node modules in case you, you do a you, npm init and then so another thing I'm gonna add in the git ignore is uh, the connection because there's gonna be some some sensitive information inside there or uh, and then if there's a connection dot PHP because I'm gonna use that as my back end I want uh, github to ignore or get to ignore these files because there's gonna be some, some sensitive info and you're gonna see that here in a minute Okay, now that I have this ignored, I'm going to open up a terminal, term, another terminal window inside GitHub. I'm sorry, inside the Visual Studio Code, and I'll just I'll just type in git status. And so what this so now I'm going to push this onto the GitHub repo like git. I'll say git add, and then dot means add pretty much all the files that need to be added to the repo. Hit enter, and then I'll hit git commit. And then M means message, and then you just type in uh, whatever the the reason why you're doing the commit. And I'll say added git ignore file and ignored sensitive files. Okay, and then hit enter. And then right after that, just hit git push, and it's going to push it onto that repository. And if you don't have this configured, I had all this is configured for me because I had configured it before the video, and I, it's been configured for a while. So that's been pushed and then you might want to kind of look into that if you want to decide to do this kind of stuff so it's been pushed to this github so I'm gonna go back over there and, and make sure that it's been pushed to, to there I'm gonna re refresh and then there here it shows that the git ignore was added to the github repository and there's all the files that need to be ignored okay now at this point I'm gonna erase this close this the terminal window and get to coding so now that I have that boilerplate github stuff out of the way I'm just gonna go ahead and add an index file and it's gonna be PHP and here I'm gonna put in some HTML5 info let me make this a little bit wider so what's going on here is I have a HTML5 document the things you need to take note of is I have bootstrap the CDN for the CSS bootstrap and what I did is I go to bootstrap right here and I'll hit get started and it's gonna take me to a page that shows me how to get started and I'm gonna take these links which you see here so this is CSS link and it says right here copy and paste style sheet link into your head so I, what I did is I copied this right here and I pasted it right here at the top inside the head section of the HTML and right before the, the other style CSS that I'm going to be using for this document 
Along with that, if you scroll down to the bottom, just before the end, the end of the body tag, there's going to be three script tags, and those also come with Bootstrap. So then they're right here. They include jQuery, Ajax pop, uh, I'm sorry, popper min.js, and then the Bootstrap min.js. And that's just a quick setup to have Bootstrap automatically in your in, inside this document. So that's at the, just before the end of the body tag. Then right before that is this, there's another script tag that's going to have the main.js. So what I'm going to do at this point is create a main.js file where we're going to have the meat of our project. So that's in there. Also underneath this bootstrap you have the title and then here there's another link to a style.css file. Now I'm going to create that right here. So I'm gonna, that's there, that's there, the main diet JS, the style CSS, and the index file. So I'm going to open up another terminal, and I'm just going to serve this page up so we can see what it looks like. And I'm using PHP, so PHP is already installed, so I'll just type in PHP version. And so I, as you can see, I have PHP 7.1.23. And I do not, I'm not, have, I'm not using XAMPP or MAMP or anything like that. I'm just going to use the, the server that PHP comes with. And the way to serve that up is you hit PHP dash capital S and then localhost. And then you just type in a port that you want it to be um, be upon. So here is, it's listening in here, so I'm going to open this up. So here it is. What I'm going to do at this point is go back to my editor. And in the style, I'm going to add some styling that I had uh, previously made. And I'm going to paste that in here. So here it is. Things you need really need to take note of are. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna close this. To this uh, I'm gonna close out this terminal right here, and I'm actually just gonna so that way we have more space here. I'm gonna open up this terminal and ser do the PHP serve through here. Okay, so the server's uh, still uh, still up and running. Okay, so that's what happened when I put all that styling. All this changed. This changed to black. This changed to gray, this changed to red, and the fonts also changed. And let me explain that to you. So inside the style.css, we're use I'm using the uh, Google API fonts, and you can find that on uh, googlefonts.com or Google Fonts. Let me just type that in real quick. The fonts that I'm using is Roboto Condensed and Roboto, and these are the the uh, weights 300, 400, 700. And if you go to Google Fonts, uh, fonts.google.com, you can click any fonts that you want from here. And I just found Roboto Condense, and I hit Add. And then I found the other Roboto, and I added it. And if you click right here, if you click up here, I'm finally selected. All I did was is I came to um, Import. And the way, you, so I went to Import and imported that, that uh, this right here. So before that, I customized it. I wanted to use light 400 and then bold 700, light 300 and then light 700, and then I, and then I came over here, copied this, and then pasted it into here, so, so I can use those fonts. So these are the fonts that are being used. These are the global the global changes within the style for the body. I use the font family Roboto Condensed. The background color is 222621. And that is this color. Let me see. That's this color right here. And if I use my, uh, I have a thing, an app called Color Slurp on my Mac. And if I want to see a color, I'll just use this here. See, there's th there's that two 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 color. It's actually this color. And I can click on it, and it'll copy that hex code for me to be able to put it and use it inside the style sheet. So those are the globals for the body. Now the the links that you saw earlier, where they, they pop out. Here's here's that information. So if the link, the link is red, it's this color right here. It doesn't have any underlined decoration. It's an inline block, and the transition uh, all is 0.2 seconds because it it turns to the right. You'll see what it looks like. The hover and the active states they turn to. Um, the color is white, the background color is red, and then you have a box shadow whenever it's active, whenever, and then it rotates 5 degrees. It scales 1.2, so it comes at you, and then the padding is 2 pixels. Okay, now I'll explain this here. If you look at the index, so Jumbotron is actually just this right here. 
it's it, it wraps the entire gist of the like the form group the, and the stuff on top basically it's the black box right here uh, that's the styling for that right here which where it says jumbotron and then the main title is white and the search box I just took away the border radius um, so say for instance if I had 10 pixels for the border radius and then I refresh this right here you can see it rounded all it rounded right here and I didn't kind of like the way it looked that looked so I just put the border radius to zero or if you don't have a border radius or at all what bootstrap does is it are, it has a predefined border radius inside of it and if you go to the developer console and look at the elements um, you can click on jumbotron and then look at the styles that are already on there and it, it already has a border radius of right here so 4.7 pixels or whatever so border radius is a uh, zero I'm sorry yeah zero and the search character button which is the button down here is actually the color uh, that Marvel uses on the on their website so here's the marvel.com website and I basically all I did was um, took a copy of that what that hex code is for that and I put it right here um, the main uh, the character main title and comic main title is actually right here with inside of the HTML file so right here is where is it okay so that's our, that's gonna be predefined since it's not here that's going that's uh, defined within our main.js and you'll see where that comes from and the last thing is the card the cards that you saw earlier let me just show you I actually have this live on my website so if I type in something right here so you and you'll this right here this is predefined in the JavaScript as well so this is actually a card right here of the Hulk and the border radius is set to zero as you can see it's very sharp or let me let me see what I set it to two pixels so I set it to two pixels and, and every other all these down here are cards and here's what the link looks like remember how I showed you that the link in the style.css which is right here this is all, all the link the way it's supposed to look so it, it, it comes at you the scale it gets bigger and it, it, it rotates five degrees so back over here and that's all the information for the style.css and then the index as well so here's the form and then right here on top of the body this is gonna this function is gonna be unloaded and it's gonna be into the main.js so that's the index file the next file that we're going to make is going to be the character file or the comic file so this is what the index is going to look like before pre and then if you go to one of the comics so here is the the comic um, if you look right here it says a uh, comic.php so that's the next thing we're going to create the next file that we're going to create and it's going to be called comic.php and within there we're going to have this bit of code so I just uh, predefined that and pasted in there and it's just and it's pretty much the exact almost exact you have the bootstraps uh, CSS in there you have the style CSS so the same style that we use for the index it's the same as here so I it made it kinda simple and just use one CSS file for each uh, HTML file at the onset of the of the comic page loading this function is going to be uh, loaded up and it's going to be in the J the javascript file you'll see that here in a minute and that's all we have so we just the main thing that you have of course you have your javascript file and then you have this cdn files for uh, jquery popper.js and bootstrap min.js and basically the only stuff that we have before the information is set to the file we just have something that looks like this it's just black on top and gray on the bottom and then whenever we have a, a comic in there the the information is, is going to be displayed through javascript and it, and so like say the the comic spinner section wherever you saw it spin that that's going to be outputted here through uh, javascript and then this here the single comic container div this is going to have all the information for the comic and that's going to be outputted through javascript now the last file that we're going to create is actually for the creator and the, the way you get there uh, so it's going to be creator.php okay and it's going to look the the exact same as the comic uh, php so i'm going to create that really quick and i'm going to put some predefined code in there so in the creator php we we have the bootstrap of course the style.css and then at the bottom you have the main js file and then you have your jquery popper and then bootstrap 
JS and within the body you're gonna have this comic creator function load at the onset of the page in the main JS file and you're gonna see all, all the information all the all the main gist of the of, of this program of this um, search engine comes from the J, main JS file so the thing to note here is that you're gonna have the comic spinner section and then the comic spinner section one and then here you have the comic creator div and this is gonna have all the this container right here is gonna have all the comic and all the creator information that you saw earlier and, and I'll show you um, an example of that so if I type in Hulk and then I'll go to one of the comics and then here in the comic section you have a bunch of different creators you click on a creator and this is what the creator page will look like so as you can see here we have the loading icon so here's the, here's the creator info there's an image that represents the, the creator Alex Ross and then all the information here is a bunch of different comics so that's the, it for the HTML and CSS portion of this project oh before I do that I'm just going to close my server then I'm gonna push all this information into my github repository so I'll just type in git add and then period adds all the files then I'll type in git commit and then M to put a message and then I'll just put added uh, boiler plate code hit enter and then last thing I'll do is get push that's gonna push it there okay so now it's pushed you see this information here and I'm gonna go to the Safari window and check to see if it's been pushed and I'll refresh this page and there it is so here's all the information that's been pushed to uh, the GitHub. Stay tuned guys for the next video that's going to have the rest of the logic in there. Hit the like button, subscribe and share. If you like these videos, let me know so I can make more. Have a good one. Bye.